Yeah. Wait, wait, does that just stop if there's liquid on the back? Sits at the bottom, right? Yeah. And then there's a hole, probably like aspirin? Yeah, there's also a hole at the bottom for oil return. Mm -hmm. Was that blocked? So I just finished cutting this suction line accumulator apart and I pulled the assembly out here and the way it works is we have an inlet and an outlet. So here, here's our inlet, okay, right here, here's the outlet. So what happens is the gas fills up the tank or the vessel, okay, and then if there's any liquid, it will fill up and it's not allowed to leave because the only way we can leave is through here, back up around. Okay, and then out the outlet. So the liquid level has to be real high in order to get liquid back to the compressor. So this is why we use them, to prevent liquid slugging of compressors. And this is why we have the tube here, to allow that dip down into the vessel. And then the gas is allowed to leave through the top here and then back around. So what I did want to show you though was, here's the oil return line. So we're going to have some oil in here with maybe some liquid refrigerant. We need to get the oil back. But look how small that hole is. So if that hole becomes plugged, you're going to have some issues with oil return. Okay, and it does have a screen. The screen is very small. Um, it's very, it's not, it's not too fine, but it's fine enough that if there's any carbon, if there's any deposits, some copper, whatever, copper filings, and we cl clog this up, we are going to prevent oil return back to the compressor. Now the reason this was pulled out is because there was about um, nine inches or so of oil in here, about a liter that we poured out. So that is how the suction line accumulator works and that's what its purpose is, is to prevent liquid migration or flooding back to the compressor during the running operation. And this little port down here is for oil return. That's it guys, pretty simple. Happy H-backing.